Shalom. Today we're going to talk about the compound names of Yehovah, Jehovah, and this would be where the name Yudhevave is immediately followed by an epithet. What is an epithet, you might ask? An epithet is an adjective or descriptive phrase expressing a quality characteristic of the person or the thing mentioned. There are a few other videos where I have discussed the actual Tetragrammaton, Ye Yehovah, by itself. But today we're going to be discussing where that name appears with some adjective or trait or quality of him. Now these are seven of the ones, and you probably have made a study of this already. But if not, I hope it'll be helpful for you. We're going to go into a little deeper, more than just the meaning, the actual pronunciation, how it appears in the text, and any further ramifications of the name. So these seven appear to come from the Schofield Reference Bible, from a footnote, which was published in 1909. And he says that these are the redemptive names, and that there are seven of them, of course. So the first we pronounce maybe as Jehovah Jireh. It's actually Yehovah Yireh. And he says it means the Lord will provide. And the background for it is from the scene of Abraham having taken Isaac up the mountain to sacrifice him. The second we see, he says, is Jehovah Rapha. It's not exactly that. The Lord that healeth. This happened at the incident of the bitter waters. Uh, letter C, the third one, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. It actually is the Lord my banner. And the people have just won a big war with Amalek. The fourth, Jehovah Shalom, or the Lord our peace, takes place in the context of Jehovah coming to Gideon and saying, O mighty man of valor, even though it seems he's hiding. The fifth, Jehovah Ra'ah, which is actually Ro'i, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The Lord my shepherd from Psalm 23. Six, Jehovah Tzidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. And finally, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there, as Ezekiel is talking about the coming temple. So we're going to see that most of these appear only once. And in some cases, in the King James, we see that the name is written all together as one word, and it actually has a Strong's number. However, if you go searching the Strong's number, it will bring up the word. It will tell you what it's made of. Somewhere in all the notes, it will show you the chapter and verse. However, the actual chapter and verse will not come up because it's not one word in Hebrew. So, maybe I'll read this slowly and you can hear it. Vayikra Avraham Shem HaMakom HaHu And he called, Abraham called, the name of that place, Yehovah Yireh, which means Yehovah will see. Asher Ye Amar Hayom, as it is said, even today, Bahar in the mountain, Yehovah Yireh, the Lord will be seen. So the root for the verb, which is year e, he will see, is the same as he will be seen. Hebrew is a little bit tricky like that. It has a system of verbs that is not used in any other language except Aramaic. And so the vowels can change the actual meaning of the word. It might be worth noting that there is no J in Hebrew, that both those letters are the same, Yud, and it's pronounced Ye, Yehovah, Yer E. The J is a new letter came into the alphabet uh, maybe in the 1600s. Uh, Yehovah Yer E is written as one word, and it does have a Strong's number, which is 3070. And as we said, this is based around the scene of God asking Abraham to take his son up the mountain to offer him as a sacrifice. And as they go up the mountain, Isaac says to his father, where is the lamb? And Abraham said, God will see to it. God will provide the lamb. In the end, he doesn't provide a lamb. He provides a ram. And so the lamb is yet to come, a reference to Yeshua. And it says he will be seen. And in fact, many years later, 
Yeshua is seen at this place because it is the place of the temple. The idea of the God that heals, and it actually says heals you. Listen, Vayomer, and he said, Im Shamoa Tishma, if you will listen, if you will surely listen, Lakol Yehovah Elohecha, to the voice of Yehovah your God, Vahayashar Be'inav Ta'aseh, and what is right in his eyes you will do, Vahazanta Lemitzvotav, and you listen to his commandments. Vishamarta kol chukav, and you observe all his laws. Kol hamachala rasher samti b'mitzrayim, all the disease which I put on Egypt, lo asim alecha, I will not put on you. Ki ani Yehovah rofecha because I am the Lord that heals you. We're looking at the root to heal, and then you see that there's this uh, extra letter, it's a kaf sofit, pronounced cha, and that means that something belongs to you, but not in this case. In this case, it means that you are the direct object. You, it's a you, singular. The idea that this is Jehovah Rapha is basically correct, but it's more personal. It is... I am the God that heals you, specifically. So again, this was the situation of the bitter water. And Moses threw a stick in the water. Very interesting solution to the problem. And kind of reminds us of if life is bitter, when we are able to look at the cross and understand what Yeshua went through, that our life can be more tolerable. The next is Jehovah Nisi, Vayivin Moshe Mizbeach, and he built Moses, Moses built an altar, Vayikra Shemo, and he called the name of it Yehovah Nisi. So the word Nes is a word for standard or ensign, a pole or a banner. The E at the end is my, it is my, he is my banner. In modern Hebrew, even post-biblical Hebrew, the word Nes also means a miracle. Maybe you know about it from Nes Gadol Hayasham, from the uh, Hanukkah dreidel. When do we put up a banner? When there's a victory. Uh, Jehovah Nisi does have its own Strong's number. It is 3071. Jehovah Shalom, which I think he translated as our peace, but there's no word for our there. It's just peace. Vayivin Sham Gidon Mizbeach LeYehovah. Same idea. And he built there, Gideon built, an altar to Yehovah. Vayikra lo Yehovah Shalom. And he called it Jehovah Shalom. Ad hayom hazeh, until this day, Odenu, it is still there, Afrat avi ha'ezri. In the town of Ofra, that belongs to the <laughs> Abiezrites. Why does he call it that? Gideon has just been greeted by the Lord. Remember, he's in the wine press, not the most likely place for threshing wheat, but he is hiding from, and the Lord has greeted him and said, Shalom, peace. Shalom is a very broad word. It means much more than peace or lack of war. We've talked about this in other places, but it means completeness or fullness. The next verse everybody knows, Jehovah, Scofield has written Ra'ah, now we're going to see that this can be a bit of a problem. The actual text says, Ro'i. I'll read it to you. Mizmor David, a psalm of David. Yehovah Ro'i, the Lord is my shepherd, lo echsar, I will not lack for anything. When we had the first, Jehovah Yir Eh, he will see, we have a, a verb root, which is Ra'ah. And this verb root is also ra'a, but they're going to conjugate and decline differently due to the nature of the middle letter. So if we just say Yehovah ra'a, it could sound like, oh, Jehovah saw, or it could also even sound like he is bad or evil. But if we say ro'i, not only is it personal, my shepherd, but it, it distinguishes for us which word we're talking about. Many languages, including English, 
have homonyms, words that sound the same. And so a lot of times we have to see by context. So this is in the context of David's experience, and we're going to talk a lot more about it later. Psalm 23. Yehovah Tzidkenu appears actually twice, both in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is talking about a future time of peace in Israel, and so it is written, Biyama Tivasha Yehuda V'Yisrael. And in, the, in his days, they will be saved, Judah and Israel. Yishkon Levetach, they will dwell in safety and security. Veze Shmo, and this is his name, Asher Yikro, that they will call him Yehovah Tzidkenu. So the root for righteousness is Tzedek, and the new at the end means our. So this is Yehovah, our righteousness. And we know that in the future, he is the only one righteous. In the future, he will rule and reign, and there will be righteousness on the earth. He is the one who establishes righteousness. Ezekiel is also speaking of a future time of peace when the temple and the government of the Lord will be established. Saviv Shmona Asar Ela. And so this is a measurement all the way around is 18,000. Beshem Ha'ir and the name of the city, Miyom, from that day, Yehovah Shama, that Jehovah is there. The word for there, like over there, is sham, and the hay is not uncommon. It is a directional ending. That means over there, on the way there, going there, we're there, the name of the city will be named for him. There is a Strong's number for this, 3074. Well, since there were seven of these, I thought it might be interesting to line them up with the feasts of Yehovah, and so I had ordered them according to their appearance in the text. Yehovah Yireh, the Lord will see to it. What, what, what was it that he was going to see to? He was going to see to the lamb. He was going to bring the lamb for the sacrifice. And so we see that the whole sacrifice of Isaac is a shadow picture of Yeshua's sacrifice on our behalf. He is the lamb, and this is what happens at the holiday of Passover. Lining up uh, Yehovah Rofecha, the Lord that heals you, with the festival of Matzah, we see that it says right in the scripture there, if you will keep the commandments, then I won't put any of the diseases on you. What does Matzah represent? It represents getting the sin out of our life. And as we get the sin out of our life by keeping the commandments, then we will be healed. Remember Yehovah Nisi, that is my banner. This lines up with the first Omer. Some people call it first fruits. It is the beginning of the counting of the Omer. What happened on that day? This is the day of the resurrection. This is a victory that Yeshua has over death, as it is written in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. Also, 1 John 5, 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. When Yehovah comes to Gideon, he tells him, he encourages him, he says, Thou shalt not die. If you recall, at the holiday of Shavuot, the commandments were given, and the people were so afraid that they said to Moses, You go up and speak with God, lest we die. So the people were afraid of dying. God gives Gideon the confidence, you will not die. Also, this is the same day as the giving of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the one who's going to bring peace. Yehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. See in Ezekiel 24 that God takes back being the shepherd over his people. Many places it is written about the evil shepherds. At this point, God fires them, and he said, he comes searching for his sheep. It is a cloudy and dark day. This is a euphemism for the beginning of the day of the Lord, which starts with the day of trumpets. It says that he will judge the flock. This is the beginning of the season of judgment. It is also the season of the resurrection of the dead. Remember in Psalm 23, it says, Yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death. Trumpets mark the coronation of the king, and Yehovah himself will come back and be our king. 
Yehovah Tzidkenu, our righteousness. This lines up with the atonement. There are other places where I have talked about the idea of righteousness and judgment going together. The scriptures here talk about the branch that will execute judgment and righteousness. Again, it goes back also to the shepherds and uh, who are counting the flaw. The scripture is talking about cleansing and curing the people. And this is the nature of the end of this period of judgment, which starts at trumpets and ends at Yom Kippur, at the atonement. Finally, Jehovah Shama, Yehovah Shama, brings us to Sukkot. It reminds us of the final ingathering, the Messianic kingdom. We know that Yehovah will be there. Now understand that Schofield was bringing up the redemptive names for Yahweh, these epithets. However, he totally missed this one. And I suspect he was just happy to have stopped at seven because it was seven. But there are a few other ones that we're going to discuss. Some of these are not redemptive, but this certainly is from Isaiah 44, 24. Ko amar Yehovah go alecha. Thus says Yehovah, your Redeemer. V'yotzercha mi beten. And I created you from the belly, from the womb. Anochi Yehovah. I am Yehovah. Ose kol note shamayim levadi. I stretch out the heavens by myself. Roka ha'aretz me'iti. I spread forth the earth by myself. Now this is something interesting, which you can only see in Hebrew, and that is the word for redeemer is goel. And it means kinsman redeemer, but it also means the avenger of blood. The same person is responsible for these tasks. If you think about Yeshua or Yehovah being that person, you want to be sure that you're on the right side of that. If he is your kinsman by the new birth, then he will come and redeem you. But if you are on his bad side and you have done things worthy of death, then it is up to him to take your life. Another epithet which appears uh, actually appears four times here in Exodus 31 and then twice in Leviticus and once in Ezekiel. Va'ata daber el b'nei Yisrael lemor. And you speak to the children of Israel saying, Ach et shabtotai tishmeru. Surely my Sabbath you will keep. Ki oti, because it is a sign. Beni uvenechem, between me and thee. Ladorotechem, for your generations, Lada'a, that you will know, Ki Ani Yehovah Mekadishchem. So you can see in the middle there, if you can read Kadosh, it means to make holy. I am the Lord that sanctified thee. The first thing that was sanctified ever in all creation was the Sabbath. And by keeping the Sabbath, we acknowledge that Yehovah also sanctifies us. Here is a name that appears these three times. Ode Yehovah Kitzitko. I praise the Lord according to his righteousness. The Azamra Shem. And I will sing and make music to his name. Yehovah Elyon. Elyon comes from the verb Allah to go up, to be above. And so this is translated as most high. We are more familiar with the expression El Elyon, which has a nice poetic ring to it, God most high. But a few times it does say Yehovah Elyon. He is the most high. A very common name, which appears many places, maybe more than 200, the Allah Ha'ishahu. And this man went up, Me'iro, Me'yamim, Yamima, from time to time, really from year to year, but it really says from day to day, to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts, in Shiloh, and there, the two sons of Eli, Chofni and Pinchas, they were the priests, to Yehovah, although not very good ones. So this is the name Yehovah Tzivaot. Sometimes it is it is transliterated Sabaoth with an S. 
instead of tzvaot. When you see sabaot, it has nothing to do with Sabbath. It has to do with this word sava, and it literally means armies, hosts, a mass of persons or things usually organized for war. So Yehovah, he is the Lord of armies. He is the Lord of hosts. Finally, one of the most precious names to me, which is repeated in both the singular and the plural over 500 times, Anochi Yehovah Elohecha. I am Yehovah, your God, Asher Hotzeticha, which I took you, Me'eretz Mitzrayim, from the land of Egypt, Mibit Avadim. So Elohecha comes from Elohim. Elohim is a word for exalted one, for God. The Cha at the end. Do you remember the Cha at the end? It was right at the beginning. Rofecha, who heals you. The Cha at the end is yours. This is a singular you, but the declension for plural you, Elohechem, also appears many, many times. And if we accept God as our God, he is happy to be our God. That's what he came for. That's what he made us for that he would be our ruler, Yehovah. As always, until next time, Tasimit Ha'inayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.